Welcome to Phil Sewing Machines. I'm Annette and today I would like to introduce you to the Baby Lock Aurora. It's a sewing and embroidery machine. If you're someone who likes to travel and take your machine along with you, you will appreciate the hard shell cover that comes with the Baby Lock Aurora. It also comes with a folding extension table. This is great for when you want to piece your quilts and do free motion quilting. Let's take a deeper dive and see some of the highlights that the Baby Lock Aurora machine has to offer. The Baby Lock Aurora is easy to thread. We'll begin threading by lifting the presser foot lever. This will open the tension disc inside the machine. The thread path is marked clearly with a black solid line. That is step one. Then we follow the marking to step two. Now we'll bring the thread down along the front of the machine and we'll make a U-turn here at number three. We'll come back up, placing the thread through the take-up at number four, actually making another U-turn. After completing step five, you can lower the press of foot lever. Now you can thread the needle bar thread guide. That's number six. After you have number six threaded, you can raise the presser foot lever to pull out more thread. Now we're ready to place the thread into the threader assembly. We'll place the thread into number seven, which holds the thread with a little friction. The next step is to trim the thread to the proper length, and that's by placing it in number eight and cutting the thread. And now the magic happens. Just press the lever down and your needles thread it. You will really appreciate the convenient one-touch buttons for the start-stop, also for reverse sewing, for needle up and down, and thread cutter. It also features a sliding speed control, so you can limit your top speed. This allows you to have more control while sewing. And again, I'll activate the thread cutter. For sewing, you have the option of using the start-stop button or the included electronic foot control. The needle plate is marked in inches and centimeters. The feet are snap-on and snap-off. Just press the black lever and that release the foot. And to replace it, just lower the presser foot lever on it and position the foot underneath and it snaps back on. Now let's take a look at the display screen. This symbol indicates that the needle will stop in the down position. This is very helpful if you need to pause while sewing a long seam. It will hold your fabric in place. You can change this setting to always have your needle stop in the up position if you prefer. The machine will give you the recommended foot to use for each stitch. For the straight stitch, it is recommending the J foot. These numbers represent the default setting for this stitch. We know it's the default setting because it has the black box behind each number. We will explore these settings in more detail in just a few minutes. This is the automatic tie-off button. This will tie the stitch off like a bar tack. It will take three stitches forward, three in reverse, and then resume stitching forward. To tie the stitch off at the end, instead of pressing the start-stop button, just press the reverse button. If you're using the foot control, keep the pedal pressed down and press the reverse button while sewing and it will automatically tie off and stop. And then you can use the trim button to trim at the end of the stitch. And there we have a nice stitch tied off at the beginning and at the end. We can make this process even more fluid by adding the auto trim. Like we did on the previous stitch, we'll press the start button, it will tie off in place, and at the end the reverse button, and again a tie off. But at the end it has also added an auto trim. If you're a quilter, you may prefer to use one of the piecing stitches, 1-25 or 1-26. With this stitch selected and the auto tie off and trim selected, it will tie off three stitches in place, stitch, and again, instead of pressing the start stop, press the reverse button. It will automatically tie off in place and trim. The tie off in place will add less bulk to your seams. Now let's take a closer look at the piecing stitch. We have two piecing stitches to choose from. We'll start with 1-25. This stitch is designed to stitch a quarter inch when you place your foot along the edge of the fabric. 
1-26 is designed to stitch with an optional quarter inch quilting foot. We'll select the manual adjustment key to make adjustments to the stitch. When making adjustments to the width on a straight stitch or one of these piecing stitches, it's, you're actually moving the needle and you can see the stitch move on the screen. We can also change the stitch length. And if you notice, when we change a setting and the black box disappears behind the number, it means we are no longer on the default setting. The left right shift is moving the stitch from its original position by 0.25 millimeters. This will allow you to stitch a scant quarter inch seam. This button will return your settings to the original default settings for that stitch. And if you want to save a particular setting, just touch the button at the top. When you press OK, you can see that that setting remained. And it will stay there until you decide to clear that setting. Stitch number 1-29 is a quilting applique stitch. We can make manual adjustments to it. We can make adjustments to the width. And on screen, you can see exactly what the stitch is going to look like. We can also make adjustments to the length, and you can change it left or right if you desire. This button will open the stitch editing screen. By selecting the mirror image button, we can flip the design horizontally. This option can be very helpful when you're applicating. The Baby Lock Aurora comes with seven snap-on sewing feet. The zigzag foot has the letter J on it, and it's used for straight stitches, zigzag, and other utility stitches. The monogram foot has the letter N on it, and it is used for decorative stitches. The overcast foot has the letter G on it, and you use that with the overcast stitches. It gives your edges a nice finished look. The zipper foot can be attached on the left or on the right. I will be using the zipper foot to encase cording. You can also use your stitch width button to adjust the needle to the exact location that you want it to stitch. By using the zipper foot for this purpose, you're able to stitch very closely to the cording. This will give it a nice finished look. Line stitch foot has the letter R on it. Normally, you would be using matching thread to your fabric. I wanted you to see the stitch, but otherwise that would be hardly noticeable. Baby Lock Aurora has a one-step buttonhole. This is foot A. You place the button in the back and lock it into position, then attach to the machine. After placing the foot onto the machine, you will lower the lever on the left. And then you can just place the fabric under the foot and you're ready to sew. When it sews the buttonhole, it would do the satin stitch from front to back on each side and this will give you a nice even buttonhole. The button fitting foot has the letter M on it. You will need to lower the feed dogs when you sew on buttons. There's a special stitch included on the Aurora. It's stitch number 4-14 and it's designed to sew buttons on. It did a really nice job. Let's check and see how secure it is. Ah, oh, that's great. And look how neat that is on the back too. You can store your accessories in the free arm compartment. It's a great place to store treats too. With the accessory tray removed, you can easily sew tubular items. The cuffs on a shirt or hemming slacks is much easier. There's a folding extension table, so it's easy to pack up and take along. Just attach to the machine and you get a nice level area. This nice flat level area is great for piecing quilts, also for straight line quilting, and free motion quilting. Now let's explore some of the embroidery features. There are 303 built-in embroidery designs. Let's take a look at the exclusive designs. They are grouped into categories, and there is a very nice selection. Let's take a look at the home accents. Let's select this one. If you want to look at other designs, just press the return key. 
pressing it again will return us to the home screen. And on the home screen, we also have categories. There are exclusive designs, embroidery patterns, monogram patterns, the alphabet font patterns, and the frame patterns. An embroidery design booklet is included with the machine. It shows the design with the full color sequence of the thread color changes. I want to stitch the floral monogram pattern, so I'll select the monogram and then the floral monogram. I'd like to stitch the letter P, so to do that we'll just scroll to that letter using the arrow keys. And then we can select the letter P and then press set and then press the edit end button and then press the embroidery button. This opens the embroidery screen. This is indicating which hoop to use and that would be the 4x4 four four inch hoop. This symbol represents the embroidery foot and is telling you to use foot Q. The upper number 0 represents how many stitches have been stitched and the lower number represents how many stitches are in the design. This represents the time that the design will stitch. We haven't stitched any stitches, so we, zero minutes, but it would take six minutes to stitch this design. And this number represents the number of color changes. We haven't started stitching, so it's on zero, and we have two color changes. This icon indicates the portion of the design being stitched. And this is indicating the embroidery field and the placement of the design. Now let's stitch the design. The embroidery speed for the Aurora is 400 stitches per minute. We'll speed up the video a little bit so you can see the finished results. Now we can trim the jump stitches. And there we go, it's a beautiful monogram. Let's take a look at the fonts. There are 11 different fonts built into the machine. Using the arrow keys, we can page back and forth through the fonts. I'll pick the first one, and I'm going to spell out Filso. Using these arrow keys, we can page through, so we can select the letters that we desire. Now we'll just continue selecting the letters. The size of the letters that I chose are too large, so it's not going to allow me to put that across. We'll just change that to small. Now we can continue to add the rest of the letters. Now that we have that completed, we can just press set. This area of the screen is showing us what it looks like in the embroidery field. I'd like to make it larger, so I'll press size. Pressing the arrows pointing outward will make it larger proportionally. I went a little larger than what I like, so let's press the arrows pointing inward and we'll make it a little smaller. And then we'll press OK. If you would like to add a design to this, you could move it in the embroidery field. I'm going to just press the center button and then press OK. You also have the option to rotate the design in increments of 90, 10, or 1 degree. And yes, sometimes I get carried away having a little too much fun. Okay, let's press reset. And then OK to close the window. Let's press font edit. This will allow us to do even more. Let's press array. We have the option to give it some curve, more curve, or lighten the curve a bit. We can press OK. I really don't want it arch, so let's press Array again, and we can press the straight line, and OK. And let's press the Font button. This gives us the ability to change the font we have selected, and there's two pages we can choose from. I would like to stay with the original font, so I'll press that one, and then OK. This is the character spacing key and you can either increase or decrease the spacing. I am increasing a little bit. I think that will make it look better. And we can just press OK. Let's select the split text key. That's this one right here.
This will open a new window. And as you can see, there's a small knife just behind the P. Let's touch the knife to the right. Now we'll move the right arrow key to position the knife right in front of the S. And then we'll touch the knife. And this will cut it. The knife will automatically move to the right of the S. And we'll touch the knife again. And it will slice it. By slicing to the right of the P and on both sides of the S, we can now work with these two letters individually. We'll press OK. And now we'll select the P. We'll select the font button and then use the arrow key to go to the next page. And I'm going to select this font. And you can see the P has changed to the new font. Then we'll press OK. And then we'll press the select key to navigate to the S. And we'll repeat the process. We'll open the font key, use the arrow key, and select the font. And now the S has changed to the new font we have selected. Currently our text is all the same color. But let's select the multicolor. And then we'll press OK. Currently the S is selected. And we can make adjustments to it. We can press size. And we can make it larger by right now with the arrows in or out. We can also use the sizing keys. Uh, that's a little big. Let's go medium. And let's press OK. Now we can select. And at this time I want to select the P. And then we can press size. And we'll touch that. If it's large. Let's go medium. There we go. That's better. And OK. And now let's select the thread palette key. And then press the red square. And then we can advance to the S so we can change that color too. And then press OK. We can press Edit End. And then Embroidery. Now this design is ready to embroider. The color sequence would be red, black, red, and black again. Now let's make a multi-line quilt label. To clear this pattern, we can select the return key multiple times, or we can use the embroidery key and press OK. We'll select the frames patterns. That's this button. And then I'd like to use the heart. And for the edging of the heart, you have numerous ones to choose from. But we'll just use a plain, simple satin one. We'll go back and... There it is. We'll select this one. And then press Set. We are in the Edit screen of the Aurora, so we can add lettering to this design. We'll select the Add button. This brings us to the Opening Embroidery screen. Now we can select the Font key. We'll use the 04 font. And now we can begin selecting letters. I'm going to spell out the word Made. And I'm going to choose the small font. To navigate to the lower case, you can use the arrow buttons below to go from screen to screen. For the space, we'll use the arrow key to navigate to the end of the alphabet. And then we'll continue selecting letters to spell out the word with. to make multi-line text by using the return key. So we'll press the return key. At the top of the screen we see the number 2. That means we're on our second line of text. Now we'll continue by spelling out the word love. And then we'll select the return key again to go to our third line. And then we'll spell out Nana. After you enter a few words, you'll get accustomed to navigating the screen with the arrows. And then press Set. We still have the option of doing some editing. Nana is kind of low on the screen, so I kind of like to raise all those words up. We'll do that by pressing Select. 
and that will select it by rows of text. And this will allow us to move each row of text. We'll start with the first row of text, and we'll bump that up just a little bit. We'll press OK, and then press Select to get to the next row of text, and that's Love. And we'll move that up a little bit too. That looks about centered, so we'll stop there and press OK, and then Select again. And then we can hit the Move button and move Nana up just a little bit too. Nana has clearance around the heart, but it's a little close to the Love. So let's move Love up a little bit. So we'll just select it, go back to Move, and nudge it just a little bit. There we go. That looks, that looks I think that's spot on. And then we can press OK. And that's what it looks like in the Embroidery field. We can press Edit End, and then Embroidery. And now we're ready to stitch the design. I have actually already stitched it, so there it is. Now, let's send a design wirelessly from our computer to the machine. This pocket is where you can retrieve designs. You have three options to choose from. You can retrieve them from the machine's memory, if you have saved some there, from a USB drive, or today we will work with them wirelessly. I will select the wireless pocket function. This area is empty. No designs have been transferred yet. Let's go to the computer. Design Database Transfer is a free download from BabyLock. For detailed information on the software, it's available on the BabyLock website. Previously, Cindy did a video on our YouTube channel using the free BabyLock Design Database Transfer software. In that video, Cindy shows you how to download it, how to install it, and how to use it. There is a link in the description of this video so you can easily access it. This program allows you to easily view your designs. You can organize your designs into folders and subfolders. To send a design to the machine, you will first select it. That will put a purple box around it. Then touch the arrow pointing down. This will put the design in a lower tray of the screen. You can send multiple designs by selecting another one and sending it to the lower tray. We will just send this one fish. I have the Aurora selected in the machine list. My computer screen is going to flicker a little bit. I'm going to turn the video back on. I would like for you to see the transfer of the design in action. Now I'll touch the Send to the Machine button. I want to set, move my camera over and it's coming. There it is. It populated right onto my Aurora screen. Designs that are sent over wirelessly to the pocket of your machine, they will stay there until you turn your machine off. And the last feature I'll show you today is the built-in help screen. There are eight different help topics. Take a look at the one that shows you how to wind a bobbin. It is showing us there are 15 steps to winding the bobbin and it goes through it step by step. That is very handy and so useful when learning your machine. Now let's take a look at everything that comes with the Baby Lock Aurora. The Baby Lock Aurora weighs in at less than 16 pounds and it comes with all of these nice accessories. I hope you've enjoyed exploring the Baby Lock Aurora as much as I have today. We've just touched on the highlights of this machine. It's like an iceberg. There's just so much underneath, it will do so much more. Whether you're a quilter or a sewer or a beginner embroiderer, this is a great machine to have. If you'd like to purchase it, it is available in our online store and the link is in the description. Otherwise, come to our brick and mortar store in Washington, Missouri, Phil Sewing. As always, we appreciate your business. Until next time, happy sewing.